Hi, certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today maybe we'd just do a little winter scene that's very simple and it'll make you feel good. Let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. They'll come across right about there. While they're doing that, come on up here. Let me show you what I've got done. Today I have my standard old pre-stretched double prime canvas. Say that with a mouthful of rocks. And I've just covered the entire canvas with a very, very thin coat of liquid white. So the canvas is wet and it's slick and it's ready to go. So as I say, let's just have some fun today. Let's do a winter scene that's got a little color in it. Sometimes winter scenes can become too cold. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the cad yellow. Very, very small amount. I just want a little tiny bit of color in this. Let's go up here. Now up in here, let's just start, and this probably won't hardly even show now. It will as we progress in the painting, I believe though. Little bit of yellow right along in there. Just making little X's or, or crisscross strokes, whatever you want to call them. A little bit more of that, I like that. There. I just want a little glow in the sky so it's not, it's not a totally dead old winter scene. All right. That's really enough. And as I say, it probably doesn't even show up much yet. It will. It will. I'm gonna take some white, some midnight black. I'm gonna make a, a gray color. There. Dark gray. Okay, let me wipe the old knife off here. We just wipe the knife on a paper towel. I'll just use that same old brush, it's fine. Go into a little bit of that color. Just tap a little color into the bristles. All right, let's go right up in here. Then we can just begin. Winter has a lot of gray skies, so that's what I wanna make today. Just making little, little X's, little crisscross strokes, like so. Let's put in a little bit of color. There, see, that's all there is to it. Start at the top and work downward. That way your paint is continually mixing with the liquid white that's on the canvas and automatically, automatically, your sky will get lighter and lighter toward the horizon. And in the landscape, that's exactly what you're looking for. All right, something about like so. Don't wanna lose all my little yellowish color there. I won't have a glow in my sky and I wanna glow there. All right, let me grab another brush. I have several of them going here. Make sure it's dry. And then I'm gonna blend this. Start in the light area and blend toward the dark area. And when you're at home, you can take your time and really, and really blend this out so it's just as smooth as silk. There. All right. And then we'll just go across the entire canvas to remove the brush strokes. Okay, I'm going back to my brush. It had all that nice gray color on it. And let's take, and once again, all I'm doing is just tapping the bristles right into a little bit of color. Just tap. So you can see one corner is hitting, but the back is really not hitting. It's just the front corner I'm using. Let's go up in here. Now maybe in our world there lives, does now, does now, that easy. Just a happy little cloud that floats around the sky here all day. And I'm just using that corner that you watched us load just using that corner and doing tiny little circles with it. The back of the brush is not touching the canvas. It's just that corner. Something about like so. Like that, just making little circles. Okay, going back to my brush, it's sort of clean. And then very gently, very gently, we'll blend the base of that out. So it just disappears, just, just dissolves right into that sky. There we go. Once again, because the liquid white's on there, this works very simply. And we'll lift it, fluff it. You could use your little blender brush to do that if you wanted to. There. Something about like that. Speaking of a little blender brush, you can take it. I'm gonna tap the corner of it, just the corner of it, same way as we did the other, into a small amount of titanium white, just a little. And this brush is so soft, you can go right back over, and maybe there's a little, little light that zings right through there. Just blend it right in. Right in, have a little light spot up in there. There, we can re reinforce our cloud a little. And we're in business, that easy. That easy. I love to paint skies, they're a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Okay, same old brush, it has the gray color on it. 
I'm going to take it now and go into some titanium white. I want to lighten the color. And pull the brush, wiggle it. Wiggle it as you pull it. That pulls the paint toward the end of the bristles. Makes the brush very sharp. See there? Good. Now with that, let's go up in here and let's make the indication of some little distant trees. They live far back in the distance. We're just using the side of the brush and bending it sidewards. This is a super way of making little trees that are far away. Far away. I don't want a lot of detail in these. As trees get closer to us, then we'll put more detail in. Right now, just looking for indications of little trees. There. Isn't that an easy, easy way of making them? You can do this. You can do this. Give him a little friend right there. Something about like that. Yeah. We'll just put a few little doers in there and we'll come back. We'll come back and we'll blend them out some. Okay, watch. Clean, dry brush. And get, get mean with it here. This is where you get tough. Take out all your frustrations and hostilities. Just get in there and really tap it. Just tap it. We want to create the illusion of mist down at the base of these. Lift upward, takes out all the little tap marks. Shoot, we got it. That easy. I'm going back to that brush. Now I'm going into the same color, it's just gray. I'm going to put the least little touch of Prussian blue into it. Least little touch. Least little touch, not much. I want it to be gray. Just want to change the flavor a little bit. Now then, maybe, maybe we're getting into some trees that are closest to us. So we touch, and this time I'm going to give it a, a little upward push. So it looks like the bristles on the tree, I mean the limbs on the tree, the bristles are on the brush. Looks like the limbs on the tree are sort of going upward. Look at that. Isn't that the easiest way to make a tree you ever seen? Shoot. Trees aren't difficult. There. Just put them in. Decide where they live in your world and drop them in. Now we have two trees. This is mostly black, touch of Prussian blue, a little white, but mostly, mostly black and white. Once again, I'm pushing sort of upward. I want these limbs to sort of go upward on the tree. And you decide in your world how many there are. You decide. There. See, here comes another one. Now sometimes, sometimes you get a little crazy. <laughs> of course, if you're an artist, that's expected. You can even, you can take the big brush here. Look at there. There's a tree maybe. He got a little more sunlight. He's a little stronger. Got a little more detail to him. About like that. And we'll go back. I'm just getting a clean two inch brush. And all that, when I beat it on the easel like that, the only thing I'm doing is removing any excess paint that's accumulated on it. And now I'm once again beating it very hard. Really getting in there and tapping it. Now these, these planes create the illusion of depth and distance in your painting. They're very valuable. They're your best friend. Take care of them. Take care of them. Now I'm going into the black some more. I'm just same color, making it darker. Might even put a little Van Dyke brown in there too. I want it to get much darker now. All right. Let's have one more row of trees that covers up this side. And it starts right in there. See, but sort of pushing upward at the same time, going sidewards and upwards at the same time. There. And you put as many as you want. Once again, you just, you, you create your own world here any way that you want it. You do it. Tell you what, get brave. Here's a big one. Push. I'm really pushing hard toward the bottom. As you run out of paint, you push harder and harder. Get it all out. That's the beauty of using these big brushes. There we go. There. Now just a few more little things here and there. Wherever you want them. There. Okay. There's one. Something about like that. All right. You have to decide where these go. Sometimes when you have this much power, you have to make these big decisions. That's the price you pay for power. You have to make decisions. And that's what we're doing right here. We're making decisions where our world is and where it goes. There. All right. But 
the nice thing about it, here you can change your decisions. You can change them at any time, doesn't matter. You could also put these in, these basic shapes in, with a fan brush if you so desired. Works too. Sometimes I do them with a fan brush, sometimes with a two inch brush, just whatever. Find what works for you and do it, use it, use it. The biggest thing here is that each layer becomes a little darker and that way it creates that illusion of depth, distance. Yeah, there. Well, we have a whole forest here. I didn't know he was going to paint a forest, but that's okay. It gives you a lot of practice. You learn by repetition, doing it over and over and over. Some, some circles, they call that practice. And if there's any secret to this technique or any technique, it's practice. That's all. It's just practice. It's like tying your shoe. When you first started, it was quite difficult. You had to look and take your time and really work at it. And, and now you do it probably without even looking. I told that to a lady one time, and she looked down, and she says, why are you wearing loafers then? So anyway, some of us learn better than others. Now I want to tap the base here. Tap it firmly, firmly. I want to create a lot of mist, a lot of mist. Really get in here and take out all your frustrations and hostilities. There, this is better than arguing with your spouse or picking on the dog or whatever. There we go. Something like that. Then lift upward, gently, gently. After you do all that hard tapping, now you gotta lift up gently. But that'll make mist that looks like it's so soft and that everything is just floating in there. It's time to wash your brush. <laughs> I really just want to get even with the camera people. They've been hassling me. Now then, in this painting, let's have some snow. There's many ways to make snow. The easiest way is just to load the brush and pull it. But Sometimes you want to make snow that looks like powder. I think we did that in another painting in this series. We'll do it one more time. Just tap. And then we go up here, and just like we was putting grass in a summer scene, just tap in, just tap it. Just pretend you're making a little, a little hill of grass back here, only it's not green, it's white. Ooh, because green snow is bad. It, it really bothers people when they look at your painting. There. Okay, now, let's take our little blender that's just as tender as it can be, very gently, very gently. Just go over that, and it makes it look like snow that's just powdery. Hope that's a word. Now then, tell you what, I'm gonna take a least little touch of, least little touch of the blue there on the blender, and add a little bit of blue right down in here. A little Prussian blue. Little Prussian blue. That'll be our shadows in snow that's closer to us. Just blue. There. Something like that. Wherever you want it. All right. Now that we have a shadow in there, maybe there's another little, little layer of snow. This is what creates the lay of the land in your painting. Let it go right down into that nice shadow. Tell you what, maybe it comes, I don't know, make a decision here. Maybe it comes around like that. That would be very simple to turn this into water if you wanted a little pond in your painting. It'd be very simple. All you need to do is put a little reflection under it and pull it down. But I don't think we'll do that today. See, now you have all these different layers. I'll tell you what, let's do. Yep. Right here. Let's, right there. That's a good spot. Let's put us in. Let's put a little house in here. Wouldn't this be a gorgeous place to have a little house? There. Come right on out here. All I'm doing is scraping out a very basic little design. Just so I have an idea. Let's go into the Van Dyke brown dark sienna mixed together. Put a little crimson in there too, just. Now then, decide. There he is, see? I'm putting the dark in first, because I'm going to have snow on his roof. So just decide basically where the roof line is. This is both browns with a little crimson in it. Not much, just 
a little crimson. Just want to warm the brown up even more. There, I don't want this painting to be too cold. Had to put your coat on to look at it. Something like that. All we're looking for is a very basic little shape. All right. Tell you what, let's get crazy. <laughs> let's make, let's turn our little house into a log cabin. You wanna do that? Okay, we'll put some little doors across this way for the top. There, I lived in Alaska for a long time. There's some of the most gorgeous log cabins there I've ever seen in my life. You wouldn't think they were log cabins. They look like castles made out of logs. Whew. Beautiful, beautiful. In Anchorage, there's a couple that you have to see to believe. Now, here, we're gonna have the logs going the other way. And all we'll do is first put in a little light area. Don't worry about it. There, see? Pay attention to the angle. That's probably the most important thing. Because we're looking at what's called a three-quarter view of the cabin. We see both the front and the side. So you have to play with angles. They're important here. There. Now the other side maybe is not as much light, so I'll add some brown to it. And we'll put the indication of a few little things over here, too. There. Something about like that. That's all we need. That'll give us what we're looking for. Maybe Tell you what, let's get crazy. Let me get the small knife. That one's too big. Maybe we'll have a window. I always do cabins nearly in my paintings where the, there's nobody home. So let's put the indication maybe somebody's home. Take a little of that yellow, cad yellow, a little white. And we'll just put some light in the window here. Of course. Maybe the lights are on and nobody's home. There. I've been accused of having that disease myself. But that's okay. Artists are expected to be a little different. And I take full advantage of it. There. All right, we'll just put some little window panes in there. That easy. That easy, we need, we need a roof. Because right now, Right now, this old fellow is probably getting cold. Now, one of the easiest ways here is to sort of outline it. See, and then you come down. Just come right on down. Once again, the angles are very important. Very important. There. All right. All right, I think we're in business there. Now we need a little snow on the other side to show that it's deep. It's very deep. Whew. Now you can make it very smooth. I like to leave it rough sometime because snow begins to decay on you. There. Tell you what, you don't get crazy? Let's do it. Maybe, maybe this little carpenter that built this was industrious and maybe he put a porch on it. So we pull out a little of that color just to get rid of that brown. Then we'll come back in here, a little white. Got to put a little snow out here on the porch, too. If it's snowing on the roof, it's snowing on the porch. Something like that. There, let me just wipe the knife off. Take a little brown. Let's put about the same basic thing out here. Need a little place to set the rocking chair. All right, let's put a, just a few little posts to hold the roof up. Something like that. Take a little color, just come along the edge here, just sort of clean the edge up, bring it all together. Shoot, we do a cabinectomy here to get our angles right. We're coming along pretty good. Let's go back to our snow brush. Put a little snow, it lives right in here, right along in here. Maybe it comes right on out. I don't know, wherever you want it. And back to our little Blender brush very lightly, barely, barely touching. Something about like that. Shoot, that's almost too good. I have to do it. I have to do it. This is just a perfect place to have a little path. We'll take a little white, let it just wander right on back. A little road maybe goes right on back up in here. 
something about like that. Just meanders up the way there, as they say. There, a little darker color in here where the ruts are. Shoot, maybe it just comes all the way out. I don't know. We can take a little white, make that snowbank a little more distinct right there. So now we have just the indication of a little road that goes up in there. Our little blender brush, bring it all together. All right. Now then, let me find the old knife. One more thing I'll put in here. Take a little bit of brown. Maybe in our world there lives, maybe there's what remains of an old fence right here. Something about like it. And we need a rail that goes across the old fence. And here comes another one. About like that, we can take a, let me wipe the knife, we can take a little bit of white and just go right above it. So it looks like there's some snow laying on the fence too. There, see there? There it is, there it is. You can do that, maybe a little snow up here on the top of that post too. All right. Let me get a little liner brush. There, usually at the bottom of a fence post, there's little weeds and sticks and stuff that grow in here because you can't cut too close to the fence. So you get these little things. Maybe there's all kind of little doers here. All right. You know me, I like, I like trees. Take that same color. There. If you have trouble making it come off your brush, all you need to do is add just a little more paint thinner because a thin paint will slide right over the top of a thick paint. It's that easy. There. Something about like that. Just decide where they live. Drop them in. In your world, you can put them anywhere that you want them. It's totally and completely up to you. And you can add all kind of little branches or, or maybe the old tree's dead and there's not many left on it. But you gotta have a few things here for the little birds to sit on. In the wintertime, they need a place to sit. Of course, they do in the summertime too, but here they can sit and, and watch you here and wait for you to bring them out some bird seed or something to eat. I raise a lot of little birds every year and turn them loose. And, so I have a special place in my heart for little birds. There. Sometimes you can take a little, little liquid white if you want to make it look like icicles hanging off and just pull a little, just here and there, a few little icicles. Can even highlight one side of these posts so they show up a little better. There. Okay. When you do yours, you take your time and you can fix all these little details. There. All right. And wherever you want to have some little indications that little things are, are still growing, just drop them in. There's some up here too. I'll put a couple up in here. There, wherever, wherever. If you want to make the road look a little deeper, take a little bit of that, I mean the bank here on the road look a little deeper. Take a little of that gray color and just sort of outline it a little and then blend it right in. There, see, and it gives depth to that side of the road. There, like that. And shoot with that and we're about we're about to the point we have a finished painting. Let that come right on up. I'm going to take a little bit of red and sign this one. I think we're going to call it done. Hope you've enjoyed this little winter scene. It's very simple. You'll have a lot of fun doing it. And if you have time, after you do it, take a picture of it and send it to us. We'd love to see it here. Sometimes when time permits, we show them on the air what people just like yourself have done. Until then, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. And God bless, my friend.